scraps to beauty. I'm still in the scraps phase. I have no idea what this is about. Micah 4. There's a Old Testament book. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. That's one of those things that uh, in the Bible you see get turned. Then they'll flip it around and do it the other way. Let's see. I'm making a different point. Scraps to beauty. My wife, Miska, has a necklace and hoop earrings from Ethiopia. Their elegant simplicity reveals genuine artistry. What's most outstanding about these pieces, however, is their story. Due to decades of fierce conflict and a civil war that rages on, Ethiopia's geography is littered with spent artillery shells and cartridges. As an act of hope, Ethiopians scour the, torch, the scorched earth. I'm sorry, I messed that up. Ethiopians scoured the torched earth, cleaning up the scraps. And artisans craft jewelry out of what remains of the shells and cartridges. When I heard this story, I heard echoes of Micah boldly declaring God's promise. One day the prophet announced the people would beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Tools meant to kill and maim would, because of God's powerful action, be transformed into tools meant to nurture life. In God's coming day, the prophet insisted, nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Micah's pronouncement was no harder to imagine in his day than ours. Like Israel of old, we face violence and war, and it seems impossible that the world could ever change. But God promises us that by his mercy and healing, this astounding day is coming. The thing for us, then, is to begin to live this truth now. God helps us to take on his work, even now, turning scraps into beautiful things. God helps us to take on his work. I like that. Uh, where have you seen evil transformed by God's love? How can you turn scraps into beauty? Dear God, please change our world. Work through me to bring beauty here. Yeah, I'll point something out. This is kidding me. I I, uh, I dated a young gal years and years ago, who was she was born here, born and raised here, but she was Serbian, and she went to the Serbian Orthodox Church um, here locally. She was real big in her church. Now, they had their congregation, and they had three people from the Serbia area that war going on. This would have been, um, this was probably early 2000s. That, I'm probably wrong about that. But they'd come back. They, these guys had already been through the war there. Had lost their limbs, lost legs, and this kind of thing. So they come here to America. The Orthodox Church pays for them to have a prosthesis. I can't say that. You know, new a new leg, a, a man-made leg, or a replacement thing, you know, so they can walk. Um... Uh, and they, they would, um, they were at this church. They lived with the, the, the congregation, the people here. They've come here for so much time, get this done, they go back home. Um, and I met these guys. You should go out to lunch with them all the time, this kind of thing. And the amazing part is, um, you think, well, oh, okay, they got, uh, I don't remember the, it's the Serbian Herzegovina and all this kind of thing. I don't remember who's who. I think there's Muslim and Christian, all this kind of thing going on. Uh, but he had one side and the other side. I can't, I can't distinguish between either one. Didn't know who was called what. Um, but here we are having lunch with these guys. And um, they were not all, all on the same side. These guys would have been killing each other back there. <laughs> but lost, the, you know, lost their legs. And here they are, just like best buddies. Um, they had already gone through the meat grinder of war. Which they did were not they weren't necessarily drafted for or enlisted for. They were taken from their homes, put in the back of a truck, and say, "Okay, here's what you're going to do. We're fighting this thing." Um, Some were on their way to school, picked up, throw them in the truck. You're part of the military now. Uh, so it's very um, crazy. But to see how under this um, what would you call it under this umbrella of this God thing that was going on, you know, this group of people that were believers. Maybe I don't agree with their doctrines or whatever. It was Orthodox Church. And they um, brought these men here, paid for their prosthesis. I can't say it. Prosthesis. Um, and meanwhile, these guys got along like they were a long-lost family. But we're on opposing sides of this war. 
but under this you know that i thought that was kind of amazing how they could they could and these guys like i said may not have been the most patriotic to their cause at the time because they were snatched up off the street uh, still, this is someone you had to oppose in battle at some point. Not these guys directly, but different sides, you know, uh, different from different teams, so to speak. Um, but it was it was uh, nice to see that they could they could sit down and break bread. They put it past them. Yeah, that was uh, I think that actually was in the '90s. But when I met these guys, it was early 2000s. I think. Love you, God bless.